The first lesson I learned was that when you set a goal that seems impossible, you will do more than you ever thought possible. You know, my initial goal was to run a half marathon. By the time I got to the starting place, about 6 a.m., my goal was to just finish a half marathon. But the key is, in this process, I did more physically, mentally, than I had done in years. I had to change, I had to be disciplined, I had to look at things differently. And by completing that half marathon, I did more than I ever thought possible six months ago. And that's why it's okay to set a big goal. Who, who knows? You don't, even, you don't, you know, I'm all for telling people, but even you can write it down. This is what I want. No barriers, no constraints, no trying to figure out how am I going to do this. No trying to figure out is anybody going to support me in this. It's just simply your goal. That's it. You have complete control over it. And when you set something big and something huge, you will do more than you ever thought possible. And so the first lesson I learned was keep them laughing with your goals. Set big, audacious goals. And when you start taking steps towards them, even if you don't run the half marathon, you will have done more than you ever thought possible. The second lesson I learned in that experience was that being committed is only half the battle. It's staying committed <laughs> that will trip you up. Let me tell you, I printed out my training schedule, had all the color codes. This is the day I run. This is the day I recover. This is how many miles I do. You know, and okay, I'm going to do on the treadmill. Am I going to go to the gym? I'm going to run outside. I had it all planned out, all the way up to the race. Put it on a refrigerator, big and bold. Start checking it off. Oh, did that. Did my run today. Did my cross training today. And all the while, Reggie was like, okay, I see you. I see you. You're doing good. Around three weeks <laughs> into this program, four months out <laughs> from the run. How many of you been there? You start out strong. You, I mean, you are raring to go. You are on fire. And then that fire just becomes flame, and then the flame becomes a kindling, and then it's like, mm, fire is out. So I said, okay, th this isn't going to work. I got I to do something different. How am I going to stay committed? And that's a question you have to ask yourself when you set big goals and when you come shooting out the starting gate on fire. How are you going to stay committed? And there are lots of ways to do that. I know people who have an accountability buddy. You hold me accountable, I hold you accountable. Now, when I say accountability buddy, let me clarify. If you have an accountability buddy where you're going to walk every day and you meet up and somebody says, you just want to go get coffee. <laughs> that is not an accountability buddy. No, 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 no. Not an accountability buddy. I'm talking about someone who may not be your friend who may not be someone that close to you, but can hold you up to the goal and the dream that you set for yourself. You know, as a coach, I always tell people, I am not here to be your friend. I am not here to join your pity party. I am here to help you change your life. And the incredible thing about that process is that, yes, I have information, Yes, I have strategies. Yes, I'm able to kind of maneuver through all the gook to help you get to some of the core issues. But that's my responsibility. I'm responsible for the information. 
you're responsible for the transformation. And so the question is, when the fire goes out, when it gets a little rough, what support system have you set in place? And I will tell you to do that even before you start, because let me tell you, this, the challenge is going to come. If you think you're going to set a goal, get to the starting gate, all lights green, and you just roll on out without any red lights, any challenges, any obstacles, you are setting yourself up for failure. But if you understand that no matter what your goal is, that promotion, that degree, getting out of debt, buying a house, fixing that relationship, it's going to come with a challenge. Just know it up front so that you can prepare yourself to meet that challenge and then overcome that challenge. So that's the second thing I learned. Being committed is only half the battle. Staying committed produces results. The third thing I learned about two months out from race day, big goals are hard. We're always looking for the easy answer, the quick fix, the get rich quick scheme, lose weight now pill, <laughs> you know, this, this one book, this one conference, this one seminar, this is going to fix it. Big goals are hard. And it all sounds good when you set the goal and you tell your friends and you make the plan and you create the strategy. But you have to know that it's the commitment, the dedication that will get you through. It's hard to get a master's degree while you're working full time. Yes, been there. <laughs> it's hard to find time to journal and reflect when you have three kids, soccer games, a job, maybe trying to start a business, a husband, and maybe some parents or other family that you're trying to take care of. But hard is nowhere near impossible. Race day, we get up, we head down to the start. With 18,000 people, you don't all start at the same time, for anybody who doesn't know how this large of an event works. You start by your speed of your mile. They call them corrals. So the fastest people were in corral number one. And then next was corral number two. And they would start each group maybe a minute to two minutes apart. Now I think that first group was like at a, I don't know, a five minute mile, a four minute mile. It's like, oh my gosh. And they're gonna run this whole thing, 13.1 miles? So I check in, I get my number, and my husband's like, well let's find your corral. There were 21 corrals. <laughs> Guess which one I was in? <laughs> 21. And we were getting ready to start, and my husband was like, you can do it, you'll be great. You know, I got the chorus, I'll try to catch up with you later. We had a leader of the group, a pace leader, and she said, you know, I'm gonna keep us on track because you have to finish in three and a half hours. Now, for real runners, I'm sure that's like no problem. But I'm like, I'm about 13 miles. Um, that's um, <laughs> trying to figure this thing out because I wasn't reading anything. I didn't know about, you know. And if you didn't pass mile five by a certain time, they would pick you up on a bus. <laughs> and they would drive you further down the course <laughs> and drop you back off you to join back in with the rest of the group. <laughs> so what do you think goal number one that day was? <laughs> Not to get on the bus. <laughs> 